Uh, we are going to check in now with our own John Gizzy, who is in Columbia, South Carolina, at Ted Cruz headquarters. John, what's the situation down there right now? Uh, the room is packed with excitement. One can almost feel it. Uh, the Cruz team is hoping that it will be Cruz control uh, within a matter of a few minutes that the senator from Texas overtakes the senator from Florida for the coveted second place finish. Now, whether or not that will happen is unknown. Just about a third of the vote is in now. But very clearly, the hopes here are that Ted Cruz emerges as the anti-Trump with the field sure to shrink and Super Tuesdays, 10 primaries and caucuses, 10 days away. Uh, when you take a look at this, it is nip and tuck right now, John, between Ted and uh, Marco. Uh, what are you hearing from Ted's senior campaign staff? Do they have uh, exit polling that makes them feel fairly comfort uh, confident and comfortable that Ted will end up in second place? They're playing their cards pretty close to their best, J.D., um, and they're not sharing any of that with us in the press here. I will say that I think that the idea of the field shrinking a little bit and less of the anti-Trump vote being divided gives hope to the Texans team tonight. Uh, now there's the bad side of it. Donald Trump actually carried the evangelical vote, uh, albeit by a tight 32 to 27 percent margin against Ted Cruz with Marco Rubio coming in third. This is going to be very important in states like Alabama, Georgia, uh, and Texas, where you also have a significant number of crossover votes permitted. Uh, but you mentioned that evangelical vote, and uh, John Gizzi, we have to wonder, given the controversy uh, that uh, Pope Francis uh, really started earlier this week with Donald Trump, in the final analysis, is that what gave Trump the edge in evangelicals? Your old friend and colleague, Congressman Joe Wilson, thinks there was a backlash for sure that South Carolinians, whatever their presidential leanings, felt that the pontiff should not have injected himself in a political contest in another country so soon before a pivotal primary race. Uh, John Pugh, a professor at Furman University who's written extensively on the evangelical votes, also believes in the B word, backlash. So apparently people in the know feel that Francis made an in-kind contribution to Donald Trump inadvertently. Well, that's, that's an interesting take. Uh, Meantime, when you look at what has happened here, and again we stress that only about a third of the precincts are reporting, Jeb Bush now down to single digits in fourth place, only a percentage point ahead of John Kasich and two percentage points ahead of Ben Carson. As I understand it, the entire or a good number of uh, Bush family members are there with Jeb. Do you expect them to have a heart to heart tonight and Possibly Jeb decide that this is it. 30 seconds, John. Yes. Yes, I do. I think that he'll choose the better part of valor and follow the advice that I'm sure family members are giving and get out. John Kasich, on the other hand, is going to go great guns and compete in Super Tuesday, March 1st. That's clear. So Bush out, Kasich up. And uh, John Kasich, given the uh, states he's visiting, like Vermont and uh, Michigan next door to Ohio, all John needs is a bus ticket and a PA system. John Gizzy, tonight from Columbia, South Carolina, we thank you for your time as you're there at Ted Cruz headquarters. Obviously, there is a lot more going on here. But again, to repeat, Donald Trump is the winner of the South Carolina primary who will finish second? We'll keep an eye on that and have a lot more as our coverage continues.